it's quite fantastic that almost 50 years after I started to think about what can be done to improve equine lameness diagnostics, lameness prevention and so on, and I realized that it was needed a lot of technical knowledge. I can now see that my ideas has come through already in a lot of fields. So I'm now convinced that equine biomechanic research is of vital importance to get the knowledge needed for making perfect horse welfare. When I took my student exam, I decided to join the cavalry because that was a very good way for a poor boy to work with horses daily. After I had done my military service, I went home and I started to think about what will I do now to go on with horses. We had in 1950 400,000 horses and they dropped in 20 years to about 75,000. So no one really was interested in horses. But my father said, Frederick, being so interested in horses, why don't you become an equine veterinarian? I hadn't thought about that, but I went to a advisory board and showed my students points. And um, they said, what do you want to be? I said, I want to be a veterinarian. Veterinarian, they said. That you shouldn't think about because in the modern society, there will be no horses and people are just interested in technical things. They will don't keep any dogs and cats and all the food we will import, mostly from Denmark. When I came home, my father said, apply tomorrow if they are that stupid, telling everyone who wants to be veterinarian, that will be a fantastic job in the future. Well, when I came to the Royal Veterinary College, I was full of enthusiasm because now I was going to learn a lot of horses, about horses. So I started to get friends with a lot of riders and trotting trainers and so outside the school. And we met, I had a small student flat at Rindegatan 48, and we often discussed different things like jumping technique, good or bad, and what was bad, and asymmetries in the horses and so on. And then I realized that we saw the same thing, but we couldn't express it in the same way. And I studied a bit about the human eye, and I saw that the time resolution of human eye is quite too slow to detect final aspect in equine locomotion and to convert that into words. So even if, if we often meant the same thing, we expressed it differently. So I was a bit always, already then, the first and second year, 6061, heading for research in the equine locomotion field. But that was not so easy because I didn't know what to do and any education for research they didn't have and so on. The third year, we should have a course for Professor Ockerblom about how to shoe horses, hoof diseases and so on. And I was full of interest. Now I should learn so much about what we had discussed already at Rindegata. How do we analyze the movements with different shoes and so on, and different hoof diseases? The day before the final lecture, Professor Ockerblom said, now I will show you how the standard bread trotter moves. He bent and took up a picture and said, here you can see the, how the trotter swings in the air. And he took another photo and he said, here again, he is on the ground. Thank you, my ladies and gentlemen, for showing the interest. And he went away. After this short presentation of equine locomotion, I was very disappointed, I should say depressed, because deep inside I felt strongly that if we didn't add a lot of technical equipment to su support the weak motion 
possibility for motion analysis of the human eye, it would be impossible to come ever further further with these important questions of lameness diagnostics, lameness prevention and so on. Therefore I went to the Royal Technical College that had a special department for photography. And they were very supportive, positive, and they said unfortunately we don't have a high-speed camera here, but our colleagues at Chalmers, they have one, and that is for renting. So if you can raise 2,000 kroner, and that was a huge amount in these days, we can help you and photograph and do the technical job. I knew I couldn't get so much money from anyone, but perhaps Professor Okerblum. So I knocked at his door and he said, what do you want? Well, I said, I wonder if the professor could give me 2,500 kroners. I added 500 kroners for extra expenses. Well, he said, what will you use with that man, do with that money? I said, I will high-speed film Stratus at Sulval from the front and from the side to see how they move in detail. But he said, I have already told you at my lecture. Yes, I said, but I think a much deeper understanding is needed. And to get that, you had to add technical equipment. He said, well, he was thinking a little, but he was a true horseman. So he gave me 2,500 kroners. And that was the start of Swedish biomechanical research. Today in Uppsala, we have the laboratory, the locomotion laboratory founded by Frederick. Uh, but today it's actually situated within the equine clinic. That means we can use the high technology equipment that we have to measure every horse that comes in for lameness investigation. One thing that made Frederick's research so successful was that he uh, was able to inspire and to recruit people with really, really good competences within engineering sciences. And that's actually what we do today as well, but we turn to people who know machine learning and artificial intelligence to help us to develop the best possible tools for equine gait analysis. So today we've got the tools to help the human visual system to assess lameness. We know what to measure and we know how to measure it. So it's of course amazing how technology develops and how we can apply that. But it's not only uh, simple, because the more we measure, the more data we get, and the more complicated it becomes to actually not only analyze it, but also to present it so it can be understood by the one using it, whether it's a vet or any other uh, stakeholder in the, uh, in the horse industry. So the human eye has problems seeing things that move fast, but we're very, very good at doing complex interpretations, which is pattern recognition. So today we get the full picture of the horse motion by using the complexity of the human brain and eye together with the biomechanical measurements we can perform in horses. One of the new developments that we are working on now is using artificial intelligence which can also perform pattern recognition just like the human visual system. So we're finally getting the human and the machine to do the same type of analysis of the equine gait pattern. And this is super exciting for us to make much more interesting interpretations of equine gait in the future. To be honest, orthopedic injuries in sport horses, they are caused by us training the horses, riding them or whatever we are doing with them in sport. But if technology, <coughs> surveillance of horses, better tools to evaluate horses can help us to prevent this instead of just working with fixing the problem. We should prevent the problem. The breakthroughs we've done today is that we can now perform gait analysis using accessible hardware. You can record the horse's motion using your mobile phone and get an AI-driven gait analysis. We've also understood that it's the individual horse motion pattern that we need to follow over time to be able to understand if the horse has an injury or is responding in a bad way to training. I'm very happy that today it's a long, lot of people, young, enthusiastic, intelligent people who has taken over my basic ideas. Because what I was thinking in 1960, 65, 70 has now come through 
so many years later because they have got the right equipment. We was on the Stone Age when it came to computers and such things. Today they can do it very easily. So I have a very, very optimistic view for the future that this group has done already tremendously, but that is just a start of a lot of important works for the horse welfare. And I think that's important. We have to take care of our horses and then we must have a better knowledge.